Hey everyone, welcome back. My name is Carlos. I'm a professional drone pilot and photographer based here in Southern California. Some time ago, I filmed a couple pieces of viral footage that you may have actually seen before, but I wanna take a fresh look at them. Now, the first piece of footage is uh, a very graphic one, I'll be honest. It's uh, a dolphin that is getting devoured by a total of four white sharks. Now, all of this happened in 18 minutes. We're gonna take a look at that. Uh, we're also gonna take a look at another piece of footage that involves a sick sea lion uh, that was uh, essentially ignored in a matter of about 18 minutes as well. Now, five white sharks passed up at this sea lion. This is very interesting to me because uh, it goes against everything that I believed would happen in that second scenario. Now, after all, it's not every day that you see a dolphin eaten by a group of sharks, and it's not every day that you see a sick sea lion ignored by a larger group of sharks. So let's take a look at this. I'm sure you're gonna have a lot of questions, as many as I do. Remember, I'm not the expert here, but we're just gonna observe and see what we can find out. On this day, as I often do, I was filming some surfers near a shark. As I stood on the beach, I noticed a boat nearby, and the people on it were pointing at something. Now for reference, I'm standing in the area near where the boat is. It's actually right in front of me and I had the drone further north, so I had to fly the drone back to where the boat was. As I stood on the beach, a dorsal fin was visible. When I got the drone closer, I noticed the shark. Right here, it appeared to make the first strike on the dolphin, and you can see the entrails of the dolphin already out. Yes, it's a bit gruesome, but this was only the beginning. It's at this moment that I go from scout mode to film mode in my mind. This means that camera angles, cinematography, exposure, and a more steady hand take precedence in my flight style. A lot of folks ask if the sharks hunted the dolphin. To me, it appears the dolphin was already dead when the first bite occurred. Here, you can see just how fierce a bite can be. The jerking movement is classic shark predation behavior. Because they don't have arms, all of the force is directed through the mouth. As is always the case, I had to return to change batteries, and when I did, the scene had changed a bit. More sharks appeared. It was around this point that things really got interesting. That's because a larger shark has now arrived. I chuckle at the folks on the boat. The three women and the two men on the boat who are pointing may not realize that the drone actually has a better view. This part is pretty interesting. Watch how the hierarchy of the sharks is in full display. This smaller shark gets close to the dolphin for a possible strike, but immediately backs out when the larger shark approaches from beneath. Watch this. It's clear which shark gets the priority. This is a much bigger shark and the classic circling behavior occurs. The pectoral fins are visibly pointed down. A strike is imminent. Right here, you see the size of the shark's jaws as it clamps down on the dolphin. I abruptly move the drone lower as a bird was sweeping in from above. As I moved in closer, the dolphin's entrails are visible. Entrails hanging from a shark's mouth is something I've seen before, but never documented occurring in the moment like this. Notice how the shark seems annoyed by it. It's flaring its gills and opening its mouth as it shakes. Right here, there's another quick interaction between the sharks, but the bigger shark this time retreats. The hierarchy of sharks is usually based on size. Like many land-based predators, larger, more dominant sharks often have the advantage in interactions over smaller sharks, especially when competing for food. 
It is apparent that nature at times can be extremely brutal, but within that brutality, there is an importance to understanding that what we are witnessing here is an ecosystem that is functioning correctly. When they feed on dead marine mammals, they are helping the ecosystem. By removing dead carcasses from the ocean, it helps prevent the dead dolphin from rotting on the ocean floor, which could lead to bacterial growth and contamination. Yes, this sight can be hard to witness for many, but it is the reality and the necessity to keep the environment functioning correctly. This is because great whites tend to target the sick, injured, or weaker individuals and prey species. It is this natural selection that helps maintain the overall health of marine populations, allowing the stronger, more resilient individuals to thrive. This keeps the genetic diversity of prey populations strong and ensures greater success in the future. This is largely why sharks are considered a keystone species. It's been widely said that sharks are the cleaners of the ocean. They are scavengers as well as active hunters. And while we know they are scavenging in this instance, much can be learned by observing them in these cases. In total, four sharks consume the dolphin completely. It is among the wildest scenes I've ever witnessed. What struck me the most interesting was that each shark at some point grabbed a bite to eat. Aside from the hierarchy, what happened here wasn't surprising. You can say it was completely by the playbook of what we know, or rather expect, sharks to do. As scavengers and opportunists, they saw a free and relatively easy meal in the dolphin, and it was just too good to pass up. The question remains, was the dolphin sick? Was it already injured? Did the sharks hunt it? It's much more likely that it was either sick or injured to begin with. I say this for two reasons. This species of dolphin is a big key. This was a common dolphin, and they aren't typically found in shallow waters in this area. They are more of an offshore species. So this increases the possibility that A, the dolphin was already dead, being washed to shore, or B, the dolphin was sick and weak, also being washed to shore. The bottom line, the sharks being the opportunistic creatures they are, took advantage. And so everything I expected a great white shark to do in this scenario essentially happened. But if there's one thing I've learned about great white sharks, is that I often find myself thinking that the only thing predictable about them is that they are, in fact, unpredictable. And my point would be proven when I filmed the same scenario with a sea lion a few years later. Okay, so having seen this dolphin get devoured by four white sharks, I left this scene thinking that if I ever ran across any marine mammal floating, that the sharks would clean it up. Uh, because that's what I've always thought that they do. Uh, in fact, how many times have we seen a dead whale surrounded by sharks that were enjoying and feasting on it? Uh, in fact, I've seen a whale that wasn't even the water. It was dead, washed up on the beach, and we had white sharks near it, uh, a 17-foot white shark just 100 yards offshore from it. So they do like carcasses. They do clean the ocean, but not always. And that's what makes this next piece of footage very interesting. I'm going to ask a lot of questions about it because... Uh, a lot of you seem to know, based on the comments, what was going on. But I tell you, uh, nature is nature, and it's full of surprises. So let's take a look at this footage. I think you'll find it interesting. In this scene, there were a total of five white sharks near seemingly sick, nearly dead sea lion. When I originally posted this, there were plenty of comments stating that the sea lion was already dead. That is fair. However, I was there and observed the sea lion on shore afterward, and it was still alive, but incapacitated. But whether the sea lion is dead or weak is beside the point. The main question still exists. Why did these sharks all ignore a seemingly free meal? We saw the complete opposite behavior when it was a dolphin earlier. What is happening now? 
in the comments of this video. Many folks state that the sharks could sense the sea lion was sick, and so they ignored it. But if that was the case, why did the sharks eat the dolphin? It's likely the dolphin was either sick or weak as well. Great white sharks tend to target dolphins that are injured, sick, or isolated from the rest of their group because they're easier to catch. The same can't be said about sea lions as great whites routinely capture healthy ones. So we are left with another possibility. Can the sharks detect amoic acid poisoning? That is a valid question. However, there's a good possibility they may be resistant to it. That is because a recent study found that 82% of bull sharks sampled contained demoic acid in their gut contents with no effects. And another study found that juvenile leopard sharks were resistant to doses of demoic acid that were toxic to other vertebrates. So it is possible that white sharks are exposed to it and may not suffer fatal effects. If this is indeed the case, it adds more mystery to why these sharks refuse to eat the sea lion. Occam's razor suggests the simplest answer may just be that they weren't hungry. Do you think so? Okay, so what do you guys think? There's a lot to consider here when it comes to shark behavior. Uh, one thing is certain is that nature is nature and it's not always predictable uh, and it's always surprising. But uh, one thing is certain that when I see these kind of questions come up, when I see these kind of behaviors, all it does is motivate me to get out there and keep filming more and more and more and searching for answers. So I'm gonna keep doing that. Uh, I want to thank everybody for for supporting the channel and for watching. Uh, if you do like this kind of content, please let me know by liking, subscribing. Uh, especially in today's age, right now, there's a giant push for AI content out there. But I'm bringing you some real shark footage each and every month. So if you like this kind of stuff, let me know by liking, commenting, and subscribing. It really means the world to me. Uh, one last note. Uh, I have not seen a shark in 2025 yet. Now, normally I've seen sharks by this time. Uh, we've been hit by some devastating fires here in Malibu and in, in the Los Angeles area recently. I'll be honest with you, logistically, it's going to be pretty hard to find sharks along the Malibu coast because of the devastation and the restrictions and the road closures, things like that. But I'm going to be looking for sharks elsewhere. As always, I do appreciate your support. I couldn't do this without you guys. I love doing this and I love bringing you free shark content. I'll see you next time. Hopefully uh, we can get some better weather and hopefully I can find some sharks soon enough. See you here.